Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm just going to be answering a question that somebody sent me directly on email. Trevor, what do you think about the UK property market and what's happening with COVID, the economy, everything else? That's a great question. But look, it's subjective. And it, if I give you my opinion, it's without prejudice. All right? I don't have a crystal ball. Um, but I'm happy to give you my opinion of what's going on. So, UK property market. We are now in the, near, the, near the end of September 2020. The furlough period stops at the end of October, so just a month away. We're already hearing that there are a large number of redundancies and terminations of contracts for a lot of people, which is starting to come through now. It's what we've all been thinking is gonna happen, and I believe that is going to happen. Uh, that's a tragedy for a lot of people, it really is. New businesses will start up, the government have to start to invest money and they haven't got you know a lot of money i think one of the saving graces for britain is brexit and i'm sorry to say you know whichever way you, you you fall on brexit the thing is i think it's been really good for us because we had already um positioned ourselves for a very difficult economic time so i think as one of the countries in europe we have been the best prepared for the financial um hit because we were preparing ourselves for brexit i watched the quarterly reviews from bank of england and i remember if you go back um before covid came and, and brexit was done the, um, Mark Carney actually said, you know, Britain has one of the most strongest and flexible economies in the world. So he said, and we've been ready for it for the last two years. So I don't think we could have been in a stronger position. I think hence that why there's been that surplus of money to help with furlough payments, to help with bounce back loans, interruption loans and everything else. So I think that's been a, a very good positioning, although unforeseen. However, it doesn't change where we are in the property market. Now, again, the responsibility of a government in any crisis, in any recession, is to get us out of it. And that means they need to spend and stimulate growth. One of the ways that they've done that is they've reduced the uh, lending down. Uh, that does help not really investors. It, it actually helps homeowners. That, um, base rate has not been passed on to investors. It's an interesting one. Uh, there is the LIBOR rate that a lot of uh, investors are subject to. That's the London Investment Bank overall rate. And that I believe is coming away in about another 12 months and we will all be off the London base rate. And when we're off that, that would benefit us more. So we're looking forward to that. The economy in britain we can see is on a little bit of a slide but it's so much better than you know what i actually thought we would be in even now and you know they put the stamp duty they chopped the stamp duty saving a maximum fifteen thousand pounds if you're a resident and just buying one property or if you're a, a property investor or developer you can save 15 up maximum fifteen thousand pounds that's great that makes a big difference so just to give you an understanding very briefly if i was to if somebody was going to buy the house and they only have one house at five hundred thousand, the stamp duty would normally be fifteen thousand, and now it's zero for them up until 31st of March. If I was going to buy a, a house, a 300,000 investment house, because I already own houses, then I would normally pay the 15,000 plus 3% extra as an investor. And that's what that 3% is for. And that would cost me 30,000 pounds. Well, again, I have a 15,000 pounds saving because they've stopped that part of the stamp duty. So I'd only pay 15,000 pounds. So you can see, both sides saving 15 grand, really good. 
that's a maximum once it goes up you're only saving maximum 15,000 but that's stimulated and we've seen there's been a surge in people uh, buying property I think one of the biggest surges and I really think that this is something uh, which is changing I think our business is going to change Edu education is changing so many things are going to change and that is where people are moving out of the city they go into a bigger house with a, an office so they can work from home based. I've seen that, I've said many times, my son hasn't been back in his office. It must be six months now. And yet he's one of their best sales representative and uh, he, he look, he's doing ever so well. I think he's getting a pay rise. Uh, I'm sure he got an award for one of the best sales people. And I think a lot more is going to happen. So the surge of prices going up, I think, was very much fueled by people moving out and saying, look, let's get out. I think there's going to be a lot of office blocks which are going to be empty. We're seeing the high street. A lot of uh, shops have gone to the wall and they're being emptied. Um, there's a lot of changes in some of the planning. We're waiting to see if the Section 106, uh, where there's uh, restriction, normally 10 houses, there's going to be a percentage sold back to the uh, the government or housing association um, i think that's going to be pushed up to 50 houses so that's a really good thing that i'm quite excited i'm watching that closely right now but where do i think prices are going to go i think they're going to slide a bit somewhere between five and ten percent i hope let i hope less and i hope i'm wrong but i think five to ten percent in some cases possibly 15 percent. i can't see more than that but we're already seeing a strength in and resilience in this country with people spending, which is great. Look, uh, it's a catch-22. I want people to be safe. And yet you see people on Saturday night, they're all out there, they're partying, they're, they're in pubs, in uh, restaurants, and all of that is important to get the GDP, uh, the GD, the GDP up. Um, but the thing is, it's it can be spreading that COVID and we're coming into the winter again and the winter is when diseases accelerate because people come in together a lot more so it spreads much quicker and we've got to heed these warnings I think if we have a second lockdown as we did before it could be catastrophic for the British economy for the housing stock because you won't be able to see uh, lenders will shrink back again I think and I hope I hope and pray that I'm wrong so I would like just to see a five to ten percent drop which I think will be I think we will be a wash with properties because I think a lot of people will be giving them up because of lack of jobs not being able to pay which is a real shame by the way uh, I think options will come into their own and again please let me implore that if you're going to use an option agreement or something make sure you're helping and giving back to the people who are getting out of it going into rented accommodation make sure they get a slice of the pie don't be greedy make sure that you're putting something so they get something at the when you term uh, finish the term of that option agreement but i honestly think that come the months of november December, January, February, March, we're going to see a lot of properties come on the market, a lot of opportunities. And it's for those people who have positioned themselves and been patient and just waiting to go. Um, again, don't be greedy, uh, respect people, try to put them, especially if it's an option, and let me just give it to you again. If your property is worth, let's say, half a million, or let's say 200,000, let's say it's worth let's say it's worth 250,000 and we're on the slide let's fast forward two months and you think you know you, you haven't had an offer over 200,000 people are offering you 180 to you know 190 well you would say well look let's have the purchase price in seven years for 200,000 but what I'll do is I'll give you 50% of the uplift over and above 200,000 except you know less my costs so let's fast forward, let's say five years, and now the market's recovered. So it's always really worth 250. So that would recover quickly. And let's say in five years now, it's worth 300. You make 100,000 pounds. Let's say you've got some cost to take care of 10 grand. So there's 90 grand. So now you're completing with them at 245,000. You've made 45,000 and you've been making money every month. I believe that's a good way to go. That's a more way to go. Please, you know, do something like that. Don't be greedy. There's plenty to go around. And remember these people who are going to be putting the houses up 
are in a difficult position. So let's be a part of the solution, not greedy and taking everything. Guys, if you want to know how to do that with the options, buy refurb refinance if you're buying an auction you must get my course i think it's one of the few in the country and it is brilliant and i, I promise you it really is i promise you, you will save save thousands of pounds there's a wasp coming around trying to get into this into this uh, video but listen guys i hope you, you've enjoyed that i hope you've taken some information please comment because if you don't agree with my prediction what's coming uh, uh, please it's subjective it's what i believe is coming i hope that i'm wrong in many cases please make a comment please share it if you think i'm talking nonsense please tell me don't worry i'm thick-skinned i don't mind i enjoy um you know making the conversation and i enjoy learning so i've got no problem if you've got more insight i'd love to hear from you have a wonderful week god bless you bye bye